In the past, his books have shined the spotlight on the controversial records of presidential candidates like Senators John Kerry and Barack Obama. And now, Dr. Jerome Corsi's brand new book, America for Sale, Fighting the New World Order, Surviving a Global Depression, and Preserving USA Sovereignty, is calling on you, the taxpayer, to stand up and fight back against the expansion of big government. Joining me now for an exclusive interview is the author himself, Dr. Jerome Corsi. Dr. Corsi, good to see you. Sean, great to be back as, with you. As I read this, I said, all right, where is the, where is the, the liberal blogger is going to attack yes. from, and I think I found the area. I think you have too. We agreed. It's, it's, I'm showing that uh, Barack Obama is a globalist, and the attack on American sovereignty, the giving away of the United States, has never been greater than under Barack Obama. It, it's, it's controversial, but there's so many areas where I find agreement. There's so much information here. I learned, for example, I've often talked about the Community Reinvestment Act right. of Jimmy Carter, doubled down by, by Bill Clinton, about Reins and Johnson and how much money they made. You have all that information yes. in there. But it's a deeper story than that. Must, because it was fraud, there was, there was an attempt here to use the Community Redevelopment Act as a way to extort banks into giving loans to people who didn't deserve them, home loans to people who couldn't afford them. Right. And this was a strong democratic initiative that carried through ACORN. In fact, Barack Obama was a lawyer for ACORN, helping ACORN extort banks uh, see, in, in the subprime area. See, I think a lot of people need to understand this, that there is a reason that we have this economic downturn. Right. Now, specifically, for example, you talk about four reasons America yes. is for sale. And, and I want to go through this so our audience can follow along with us. We start with the mortgage bubble, the, right. the subprime crisis, Fannie and Freddie. And also keeping interest rates artificially low, 2003, 2004, at 1%. And by the way, that's not even good enough for the Obama administration. Now we have interest rates at zero or close to zero, so we're bubbling up again. And the bubble produced this housing boom that was certain to collapse once interest rates increased because the subprime lenders couldn't afford the homes. You know, but, but there's also corruption. Yes. You describe all yes. the friends' advisors you point out. And I didn't know this. I learned this in this book. The friends, including some prominent senators like Senator Dodd, who yeah. utilized friendships with very uh, extreme subprime lenders to get favorable rates mortgage. for countrywide well, mortgage. You, was it Johnson or I think it was Johnson, Johnson also got yes, a Friends of Angelo deal. These were all I didn't know that Friends either. of Angelo and so no. our congressmen a lot of the Democrats had themselves lined up. But, the, but they made millions. Yes. And if this was a private corporation well, would they be in jail? They should be right now investigated. Again these, these private deals that Senator Dodd and the others had to their benefit while the economy tanked and there's millions of people now facing losing their homes, Senator Dodd and the other Democrats should be held accountable for this. Now, there's, again, back to the four reasons America for sale. Yes. All right, so we got the mortgage bubble, which we just talked about. Yes. The second thing that you point out is the dependence on, by the way, I, um, if we don't end our dependence on foreign oil, oh. we are nuts, but the dependence yes. on foreign oil. Right, and right now we're, we're at 60% of our oil comes from foreign sources. At the end of the Bush administration, there was voting in Congress to allow offshore drilling. The Obama administration is still holding that up. And again, we find countries like Brazil. Brazil is about to become a Saudi Arabia of the Western Hemisphere with offshore oil. If Brazil can do it, we're going to allow Russia and China to drill off no. Key West. And we, and we have enough resources in the right 40, now. Right now. Available. Exactly. Alaska, Anwar. We're finding there's huge amounts of natural gas at deep levels within the continental United States. And in the Gulf? The Gulf, the Gulf we, we found tremendous uh, new resources that if we would allow offshore drilling, we could, within a 10-year period of time, move dramatically closer to U.S. oil independence. All right, so now, so those are the first two, Americans for Sale. You talk about a global new deal. Yes. A lot of people hear that they think conspiracy. No, it's, it, it's a matter of the pushing the international organizations. We had a new deal under Franklin mm -hmm. Roosevelt, which was redistribution of wealth in the United States, creating all these massive social welfare programs. Now it's internationally going on, where groups like the UN, other groups, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, they want to redistribute U.S. wealth to the world. And Barack Obama, instead of talking about the U.S. economy, the U.S. worker, is focusing on our world you position. You are convinced that these organizations, and you go into great specificity and detail, yes. and you name names, we don't have time yes. to go through them all, but you are really convinced that 
there are people in this country that want America, not just to redistribute redistribute wealth among Americans, right. but to the world. Exactly, and I cite yes. them. I name some of these globalists. I, I go through George Soros, show George Sor we're Soros. We're going to get into this. We're going to get into these four in the next segment and here. The, and the whole issue is that if the International Monetary Fund is going to, or the, or the United Nations or the World Bank, say we've got to have more voting control from the third world. Right. We've got to level the U.S. economy. We've got to make sure the U.S. plays by these international rules when every time the president goes to the G20 meetings yeah. we just had one in, in Pittsburgh again rules were signed to give China and the less developed countries more control over the International Monetary but, Fund but, but this is the fourth thing destroying the dollar and replacing the dollar. the dollar as the standard exactly and this attack is going on now even the Obama administration has endorsed the plan to use the International Monetary Fund's special drawing rights as an alternative to the dollar in international trade. China's advanced this plan, Russia's advanced it, and President Obama at the G20 meeting in London in April signed the agreements that we're gonna put $250 billion into the special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund. Stay right